Welcome to Magic Arcanum, I'm Ryan Gomez. Behind the scenes is Nicole Letson. We're so glad you're here because it's story time! Dominaria was a set filled with references to some of the earliest days of magic, but with so much going on, it was easy to overlook some of the more subtle bits. That's why today, Nicole and I wanted to give Dominaria a proper Magic Arcanum farewell as it rotates out of standard. Now, before we get started, I want to give a thank you to everyone who makes this show possible through their support on Patreon. We've got a link down below where you can see our page, and subscribers at any level get access to exclusive deck lists and some fun other little bonuses that I throw on there from time to time. And if you're looking for extra incentive to subscribe, I just created a new tier that's going to be capped at 36 members. Why 36? because that's exactly how many boosters there are inside this unopened box of Dominaria. Once all 36 spots are filled, I'm going to open one pack per person on video and then sign the legendary creature that you find in there and mail it right to you anywhere in the United States. How cool is that? You get to own a little piece of Magic Arcanum history and pick up something unique for your next commander deck to boot. All right, let's talk about Dominaria. I'm going to start with the story spotlight cards to establish what's going on here in the set. The first one is Broken Bond, which shows Nyssa leaving the Gatewatch and returning to her home of Zendikar to help the plane rebuild after surviving the Eldrazi invasion. Nyssa was furious she had gotten dragged into a fight with Nicol Bolas on Amonkhet, and she felt Liliana had started using the Gatewatch to serve her own needs rather than helping people in need, as they had originally pledged. So Nyssa leaves the Gatewatch and just quits. A few moments later, Chandra also announces she's leaving too. She wants to go off and train more so that she's ready for their next big encounter. She's also frustrated about their recent loss to Nicol Bolas. Jace is missing because at this point he is stuck on Ixalan, but nobody in the group knows that yet. With him out and Chandra and Nyssa leaving, that leaves just Gideon and Liliana to be the focus of the story on Dominaria. Which brings us to the second story spotlight card, Final Parting. This one shows Liliana destroying her own brother, Josu Vess. Why is she killing her own family? Okay, well, a long time ago, Liliana lived on Dominaria, and believe it or not, she was practicing to become a healer. Check out her card from Magic Origins. In the background here, we can even see the Vess family manor, and inside there somewhere is her brother Josu, who had recently fallen ill. Liliana was supposed to go out and find some herbs to cure him, but instead she encountered a mysterious stranger who gave her a magical potion. This guy, called the Raven Man, ends up becoming a significant figure in Liliana's life, but that is a story for another time. Liliana takes the potion back to her brother, but instead of curing him, it turns him into a flesh-hungry monster, and he starts attacking these servants in the house, and then coming for Liliana. She raises one of the servants as a zombie to defend herself, and then somewhere in here, her planeswalker spark ignites, and she leaves Dominaria. Now, many years later, Liliana is back, and she's found that her brother has been turned into a lich, and he serves a demon named Belzenlock, who happens to have a contract over Liliana. I know, I know. Her backstory is huge, and it does deserve its own video. Someday. Here's what you need to know. After becoming a planeswalker, Liliana struck a deal with four different demons on four different planes. That would grant her eternal youth and beauty, but it would enslave her to them. So, one by one, she began killing them off, thinking that ultimately that would free her from this contract. The last remaining one is Belzenlock, right here on Dominaria. So, Liliana convinces Gideon to help her kill him, and tells him that then she'll be free and able to help the Gatewatch with all of their problems. Step one, though, is getting through her own brother, Josu. And that ends up being one of the more emotional parts of the Dominaria story. With her brother laid to rest, Liliana is able to turn her attention onto the demon, and that's what we see in Settle the Score, our third story spotlight card. Now, in the story, Liliana ends up using a now well-known sword called Blackblade to kill Belzenlock. 
which then later gets carried around by Gideon for War of the Spark. But either way, the demon ends up dead. Liliana expected to be free of her contract, but she did not read the fine print. Which brings us to story spotlight card number four, In Bolas's Clutches. With the four demons dead, the contract defaults to Nicol Bolas, so he arrives on Dominaria to whisk Liliana away. He has great plans for her, as we find out later in War of the Spark, where she is the general of his Dread Horde army. So those are the four story spotlight cards from Dominaria. Nyssa quits the Gatewatch, Liliana kills her own brother and then her last demon, but in the end, Nicol Bolas arrives to claim Liliana. With the benefit of hindsight, we can see how much the story on Dominaria was setting things up for War of the Spark. Gideon and Liliana got to spend a lot of time together and really know each other well, which makes his sacrifice on Ravnica all the more significant. While Liliana and Gideon are doing all of this, there is an entire second storyline going on that involves the Weatherlight getting a whole new crew. So let's talk about that for a minute. In the early days of Magic's story, a lot of the adventures focused on the crew of an airship called the Weatherlight. In Dominaria, we get a new version of it, a vehicle, and several new legendary creatures to serve as her new crew. They play a role in helping Gideon and Liliana breach the fortress of Belzenlock, but more importantly, they reunite three other planeswalkers from Magic's past. Those would be Karn, Teferi, and Jaya. All three come to Ravnica to help in the War of the Spark, with Teferi even going so far as to take the Oath of the Gatewatch, and then taking an oath to ruin Standard, depending on who you ask. Anyway, I plan to cover all the Planeswalkers in their own individual videos, provided I get the support from Patreon to make that possible. For now, though, I'm just covering the basics. Let's start with Karn. When we meet him in the story, he is digging around in a forest looking for a magical artifact that was lost a long, long time ago. Some people believe that this is the Golgothian Silex, a powerful weapon used by Urza to end the Brothers' War although the story never actually confirms that's what it is. Karn is found by Chandra, uh, who rescues him from a bunch of attacking trees. Because the trees are angry, Karn is digging around in the forest. We actually get to see this happen on Fiery Intervention, even though it's not a story spotlight card. Karn wants to use the artifact he's digging up to go fight the Phyrexians, but he gets convinced to first help defeat Nicol Bolas, in War of the Spark, so he comes along to Ravnica along with the rest of the Gatewatch, but he does not take an oath. Meanwhile, Chandra also learns that Jaya had been a mentor to her at Carol Keep, where she had learned the ways of pyromancy. Jaya also agrees to come to Ravnica and help, but she does not join the Gatewatch because in her own words, she's not a joiner. That leaves us with Teferi, who is a very old planeswalker who had at one point lost his spark, but he gets it back during the story of Dominaria thanks to help from Joyra, who had become the new captain of the Weatherlight. So those are the major players and planeswalkers who show up in the set. For the rest of the video, I want to talk about some of my favorite legendary creatures and other cards because we are much less likely to see them again anytime soon. I'll start with a fun one. This is Shalai, Voice of Plenty. She's a white angel, obviously, but she has a green activated ability, and that is kind of odd. We see plenty that use black or even red mana, but not so many with green. So what is her story? Well, Shalai is the guardian angel of a specific part of Dominaria, and that's Lanawar, home of the famous Lanawar elves. And once you know that, her card makes a lot more sense. Elves are small and weak, but they can make mana, which fuels perfectly into her ability because she can then make them bigger and stronger. And the hexproof bit even helps the elves exactly the way a guardian angel would. This wound up being one of my favorite legendary creatures in the set, and I even put it into a deck in Arena, which you can find over on our Patreon page. Uh, it's a historic deck now because Dominari is rotated out, but there might be something there that you can build upon for modern or other formats if you like it. Oh, oh, and I should tell you all, Lanoir Elves is the card that got Nicole to play Magic, and now she has a Pauper Elf deck, which is fearsome. 
and I will try to get her to share that list over on the Patreon page as well. Shalai's boss would be Lyra Dawnbringer, who is continuing the mission started by Rhea Dawnbringer, and that is to protect Benalia. And I guess that now extends to their allies as well, including Lanawar. Maybe on future visits to Dominaria, we'll get to see other angels protecting other regions of the plane with matching color identities to go with it. What do you think? That'd be cool. Anyway, sagas were a new type of enchantment introduced in Dominaria, and each one tells its own mini story. So, of course, of course, being a lore mage, these things really appeal to me. My favorite of the bunch was The Eldest Reborn, which shows Nicol Bolas using some time travel to fetch a younger body of himself to use. And who among us hasn't wanted to do that at least once, right? One of the more popular sagas was History of Benalia. The nation of Benalia has a long and proud history on Dominaria, and it is presently ruled by seven different houses. Each house has its own symbol that incorporates the number seven. Check out the seven arrows here and the seven-pointed star behind this guy. Also, note the seven phases of the moon around the outer edge. That's because in Benalia, each of the houses takes a turn being at the highest rank, and that's tied to the lunar calendar. Depending on where you are in the cycle, your house might have different responsibilities or areas of authority. The whole thing seems really balanced and well thought out, more so than Eldraine. I kind of want to see Will and Rowan Kenrith show up on Dominaria and see how they interact with the knights and nobles there. All right, so the theme of Dominaria as a set was history and nostalgia, especially for players like myself. In the story, it is a point of rebuilding. The Gatewatch just lost to Nicol Bolas, so they needed time to lick their wounds and regroup and recruit some new members. So, how did the themes of this set mesh with the story? I think they came together very well. Sagas, as we've said, each told their own mini story about Dominaria and gave you this feeling of building towards something every turn. The abundant legendary creatures made it feel like you were assembling your own team of heroes, and there were plenty of payoff cards for having historic cards in play or being cast. And the set featured Kicker, one of the most beloved mechanics of all time. It's flexible, strategic, and still gives you that sense of building towards something while also being a nod to the past. Overall, I found Dominaria to be a great set, one of my favorites in 20 years of playing Magic. But like I said, there was so much going on in there, it's easy to miss all the little stuff. So I want you to share your discoveries in the comments. Who was your favorite legend? Which saga felt the most powerful to you? Did you ever get to kill someone with a kicked fight with fire? That's good. Nicole and I want to hear all about it. And then make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the great stories you'll only find here on Magic Arcanum. We'll see ya.